Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode here in Australia. As you might be able to hear and see, we've got some rain again to help us cool down while we're on the workout on the water. It also helps, not sure if you'll be able to tell, my hands are getting pretty battered, but on the positive side, the rain helps it be a little bit more moist and helps them out just with moving rather than drying out. So, let's Get out there in the rain and get on the water. Got your sunscreen, Jacko? And we've made it to the end of our first leg up. So a roughly 20k session, just finished 10k. We have been blessed by the weather gods this morning. The rain has eased off, the blue skies are coming this way. It always looks a lot worse in the dark, but when it lights up, boy does it get beautiful out here. You're out here on the Nerang River, which means Little River, which to me, I wouldn't call this a little river, but compared to many rivers out here in Australia, supposedly from Marcus, oh, <laughs> it is a little river. <laughs> Good session, big dog jackal. Good session, a wet session, a hard session, a grit. <laughs> Agreed. <clears throat> Don't know if you'll mm, not really be able to tell. But it's a case of being able to make a fist becomes difficult. And to grip the handle, you have to have at least some grip strength, so not that it was making me specifically slower today, but it's just something like when you take a stroke every second or so, it's just a constant like reminder. But like Big Dog Jacko said, good session out on the water this morning. 
finishing by seven o'clock and today a little bit different. Original plan, sticking to what we've been doing for the past few days, getting out and doing weights or a, a second or third session. But today we've got a little bit more adventure plan, not quite as much adventure as adventure day the other day, but we're getting to go and explore a bit more of Australia. Some of the guys and girls uh, that train usually at the club here are currently on camp. So we're gonna go there, hopefully, depending on how long the journey takes, drive there after de-rigging, and then hopefully train with them later this afternoon, then stay there, train in the morning, then come back. So another adventure here in Australia. But before we get to that, as always, we've got to fuel up because remember, food is fuel. So I'll probably see you after that. Boat on roof. This is normal for the Gold Coast, right? <laughs> totally. Starting off the fuel and recovery post session with some juice. We went for the, the green juice, and the green A juice. Kale, cucumber, green apple, celery, lemon, and ginger. Very refreshing, and it's got that ginger in it where it's like, oh, that's a lot of ginger. But now, a little bit more relaxing, a little bit more fueling. And then how long is the drive potentially today? Uh, we're looking at a leisurely six hours of car entertainment. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so much I spy. <laughs> oh, yes. And some around the world and other... Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic <laughs> great games. So let's get to it. And we're off. And obviously, the first stop on the journey is a fuel. Not fuel for the vehicle, but fuel for us, because remember, food is fuel, and then we'll probably stop for fuel for the vehicle. But we've got an apple pie. Apple pie, banana. Banana, banana one banana? Or banana? Well, we, we went the whole... Oh, banana bread. Yeah, the a whole, whole banana, yeah, loaf yeah. of banana bread. Uh, Vegemite so, scrolls, as we're in Australia. Vegemite scroll. What? A scroll? A, yeah, a pastry, but Vegemite flavoured. All right. You'll love it. Vegemite pastry. I don't think I've actually ever had Vegemite, so that's something to look forward to. Um, two pizzas. Two pizzas. We know from previous adventures, better to be prepared. Yes. yes. From from adventures the other day, um, fuel is very important, and then. Did I say vanilla slice? I've not. But, yeah. It's a solid vanilla slice. Usually, like when we go to the shop, the bakery is at home. It'd be like half the size. No, this was looked like <laughs> based on judgment. You've got a 500 gram. <laughs> it's <laughs> vanilla <laughs> slice. So definitely got a good amount of fuel for this very extraneous journey. We've double checked. We have boat. <laughs> we have the boat. Rigger. We have the rigger. Two oars and a seat and a great attitude for a six hour drive. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. So let's get, so it's about two-ish, two and a half to three hours for the first stop. We're going to a wonderful little town called Gimpy. Or Gimpy, Gimpy, Gimpy. Gimpy, Gimpy, Gimpy. And that's where we're going to stop first. To pass the time here in the journey, it's gonna take us around about six hours overall. We're gonna do a little bit of I spy. So, I'll go first. Okay. I spy with my little eye something beginning with R. Tough one. Road? Yes. I spy with my bionic eye something starting with S. Sky. <laughs> you got it. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> Look at the size of this vanilla slice. Absolutely fantastic feeling. Don't think I'll be needing many of these. But it's going to be delicious, I bet. So there is Itulga, 
that it's gay and dark. Emergency food. <laughs> because food is fuel. So I've just fueled up because remember food is fuel. Put some fuel in the vehicle because remember fuel is fuel. And I know there's a burning question that everybody asks. When you go to the Olympic Games, when you go to the Commonwealth Games or any big sporting event, there's usually some mascots around. And everybody asks, what happens to those mascots? Well, here on the way to where we're going, we have met one of those mascots. The 13 meter tall Matilda the Kangaroo just out here at a service station, an icon of Australian Commonwealth Games history. I just think it's pretty cool, just being out here, experiencing Australia, experiencing little bits of history throughout the world, and obviously getting some delicious fuel, because remember, food is fuel. And now back on the road. Something beginning with G. Grass? I don't... Yes. <laughs> B. Something starting with B. B. I've got... I think I've got it. Boat. <laughs> Correct. Let's go! Something beginning with C. Cumulo nimbus cloud. Believe it or not, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I spy with my little eye something beginning with D. Would it be after 600 kilometers? Damn. <laughs> oh, yes. So that brings the score to 278 to me. I think you, so, you're just ahead 283 to. It's close. It's very close. So we'll have to have a rematch to sort out who is the best at I Spy on the way back. So approximately 600 kilometers completed after a lovely row this morning. We're just locating where to boat from. And we're going to get the boat that's on the roof currently de rigged. Gonna rig it up. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Get on the water and have a lovely paddle out on these waters here. What an amazing opportunity, Yam Squad. We're out here paddling on a lake in the middle of Australia, just enjoying myself trying to improve my rowing. And I wouldn't be out here in the middle of this lake in the middle of Australia without the help of the Yam Squad. 
So thank you Yam Squad. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my paddle and head back in on land to fuel up because remember food is fuel. And we've finished up the session. We've got the boat onto the roof so we can move it to the trailer and just enjoying a little bit of the sunset post session pre fueling up. But great to be out there on the water in a completely different environment once more. The water itself is so it's a dam, a flat water, non streamy water, which makes a big difference. Sometimes when you get on a river, you can think, hmm, this is quite unpredictable and quite hard to control, but you get on the flat water and then it's like everything you do affects the boat versus not everything you do plus the stream. So good to get out there, boat feeling nice and smooth. And as well, the water itself is absolutely roasting. The water at home wouldn't get that hot probably ever. But worked up a decent appetite with the big drive and then getting on the water pretty much immediately. Enjoy today. Very much an adventure rowing this morning in basically a city and now rowing in the late afternoon, evening in the countryside. So great opportunity. Today, we're at the lake here at Cania Dam to do some higher intensity with. There's a couple of under 23 people here with the club that I've been training with, Griffith University. So, excited to get out there again, like I said yesterday, on some water that isn't streamy and just see how I get on there, but also against some different people. Unfortunately, that isn't Big Dog Jackal. <laughs> And the session is complete. Thanks to Anthony for filming there. He was on the start line, so some good start line footage, at least. I haven't seen all of it yet, so I, I assume it's good. And tough session, four 2Ks. Different environment, different place to row, and getting out there and racing different people. So it's good to, a very good opportunity to get out there and train, very good training, tough workouts, especially at the end, or yeah, almost the end of the week. And the pieces themselves, quite difficult for me right now to really say that's on and that's not on kind of thing. I can feel when it's not right, but it's quite difficult for me to switch back to it feeling right. I've got a couple of cues to physical cues to feel, which I think are definitely helping. But it's when you do the physical cues and you're a bit sort of, well, this guy's in front or I'm not moving or the speed's not changing or not. So it's just trying to, at the moment, make sure that when I do make a change or if I don't make a change, that I know what's happening or getting, getting more the feeling of the sensations internally a bit sharper rather than making it a slight guessing game, which uh, is that kind of thing is a constant... Um, learning experience things change internally things change externally um and so you have to be able to regardless of what's happening know what's going on within yourself so definitely i think getting better at it but slightly disappointed with some of the well some of the rowing and not so disappointed with other parts of the rowing as anthony asked 
if I was to give the score, the session a score at a 10, I would say around a five out of 10. I felt like I dealt really well with everything going on, apart from I did hit a big wake and catch a crab. But apart from that, everything else, I felt like I dealt with well, just the overall technique, I would say brought that score down uh, a little bit. So that will be it for today's episode, Yam Squad. For us, it's time to rig up or de-rig, put the boat on the roof and get back to surfer's paradise and back to training with big dog Jacko. But just embracing the opportunity to do a little bit of something different, getting out here and training with some really good rowers and being able to compare myself to them, which is something that generally haven't been able or haven't been doing um, much in the past six months or so. So even ignoring everything else, that is a good thing to do. So, as always, Yam Squad, if you like this different variation episode, because remember, variation is one of the keys of motivation, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, let me know why, and hopefully we can improve. And as always, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next episode. Good as fuel.